Hi, Allie. Hi. We went over, we went over the homework, so you. I'll shine a light on the answers on my paper. Or actually, I'll give it to Julia. She can do that now, so I won't forget. So that was 2.1 number, nope. 2.1B numbers 19, 21, 23, 31, and 33 through 38. All right. I pretty much circled everything in pen, so if you would just... Why does none of my pens work today? It's crazy. All right, everything that's circled here, Julia, shine, or I can hold it up here. You can kind of maneuver it around. Check your homework against ours. We just went over it. And Allie, we also talked about whether or not we were interested in AP testing. It's your choice, so I need your reflections on that. Why is our school so loud? Got it. Okay. Thank you, Julia. All right. The, the AC thing. The We're taking notes on this page. I'm going to show her this now. <laughs> Here's our topics for today. And eventually we're going to do this check your understanding so you can go back to that frame and freeze it when we get to that discussion. All right. All right. Any other old business? <laughs> Yeah, where are you, Allie? We don't know what's wrong. All right, hope you're doing okay. So, hope to see you soon. All right, we were talking about going from histograms to density curves, and today we're gonna to talk about a very special density curve, and it is the normal curve. We will meet this probably every day for the rest of our stat existence. So let's go ahead and take some notes, and First, title it the normal curve. All right, so the normal curve is a special. Hello? <laughs> we don't usually get a phone call. I think do they we? want you to pick up. They want you to pick up? Yeah. You can have it. I'm sorry? You can add anything. I know. That's right. You were probably in the other room. There you go, this is where we're taking notes. Normal curves, it stop ringing. Yeah, it stops now. All right, so let's call a normal curve a special density curve. Oh, she can see it. Okay. I wrote it with my left hand. <laughs> a special density curve. No, Caleb. Does she need to see the definition? It is special in that it has one peak. It is symmetrical. And it is bell-shaped. So you've heard of the bell-shaped curve. So that is the normal curve. Let's draw one. Okay. There's the bell-shaped curve. And that is an example of the normal curve. Here's another one. So this is still has one peak, it's symmetrical, it's still bell shaped. So notice the spread on the first one is larger than the spread on this one. Here it's spread out, here it's not so spread out. But they are both normal curves, so the spread is is relative, so we don't it doesn't have to all look alike, but it has to follow this one peak symmetrical bell shape. So that's the normal curve. It shows up everywhere. If you measure the leg of a cricket and all the crickets that you can come up with, guess what? Some of the crickets will have very short legs. Most of them will have a certain number for their leg length, and some will have very long. But it will follow this pattern. So if you do the heights of everybody, your age group, it will follow the bell-shaped curve. If you roll a dice and you're expecting uh, to get a two, uh, every, you're expecting to get a two one out of six times. Sometimes you'll get more than that. 
sometimes you'll get less than that. So even uh, chance will follow the bell-shaped curve. There was um, a thing, I think it was on Brain Games, where they had like, uh, like a jar full of uh, gumballs or something, and they had all the people come and guess how many were in it. And all they did was have like 20 people guess, and they just average all their guesses, and it was like within five of the actual answer. Really? Yeah. Well, that's amazing. All right. Um, the other thing, one time they had, what did they have us count in here? There was a jar of something. You remember that? It was like a contest, and they had so many things in I can't, yeah. There was a jar full of something in the teacher's, I mean, in Miss Stone's office, and we had to um, guess what it was. I can't remember what was in it anymore. And I won. So, I can remember yeah. what it was. Where did you so, win? They said because I know math, but I don't know numbers very well. So. You win. You win like a crowd. <laughs> it had nothing to do with knowing math, believe me. Wait, what did you win, though? I don't remember. Some gift card, I'm sure. It was very nice, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> so what if you measure corn yield every year? Some years you would get just a little corn, and some years you'd get a whole lot more than average, but most of the years you'd get within this range of corn yield. And the other things that you could do would be, um, how about if I ask you to measure this table and you had to do it a hundred times, sometimes you would get a small measurement, sometimes you'd get a large measurement, but most of the time you'd get actually near the actual the measurement. So the bell-shaped curve, IQs follow the bell-shaped curve. Some have low IQs, some a little bit of people have high IQs. And most people have them in the middle. So the bell-shaped curve will meet in a thousand different scenarios probably this year. The mean and the median are the same. So would you draw in your mean and your median? They are, because this is exactly symmetrical and there's no tail to pull on the mean, that is the mean. Remember, we decided to use the mu symbol for mean. And so this is the right also, it's also the median, which we call capital M. So they're identical and they're at the right there. It's also the mode. So the mean and the median, the mode. We're not interested in the mode so much, but they are all at the same spot. If I tell you that I have a normal curve and I give you the mean and I give you the standard deviation, this completely defines the curve. So if I tell you it's normal, if I tell you it's normal at the mean and the standard deviation, you will completely understand the curve. If you could draw the normal curve with this given mean and standard deviation, deviation, you'd all have exactly the same curve. So the mean and the standard deviation completely defines the curve. We already talked about the mean being here at the peak, but where can I draw in the standard deviation? So what you need to understand from math class, even if you haven't had it yet, is where the curvature changes. Right here, this thing is frowning. Is that half of a frown? Can you visualize at this point that changes? It's no longer frowning, it's smiling. Smiling. What's that called, Bailey? When it goes inflection from, point. All right, it's an inflection point. You don't need to know that. We'll call it the change of curvature. Can you visualize it on this one? Right here, it's going frown, 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 about right there. Right there, it changes and starts smiling. So that's called the change of curvature or the inflection point in mathematics. All kinds of wonderful things happen in math right there. But all we need to know is that change of curvature occurs at one standard deviation from the mean. So notice how I drew that. There's an arrow from the mean to the, the where the change of curvature takes place, 
and that distance is one standard deviation from the mean. So we can go out this side as well and say that is one standard deviation from the mean. Two standard deviations from the mean. I can't show you a point of curvature, but now you know the distance. It's this far on my, yours on your paper is going to be different, but eyeball it. So that would be two standard deviations from the mean. And we're only going to go out three standard deviations from the mean. So here's 2D, two standard deviations from the mean this way and this way. And lastly, I'll go out three standard deviations. Again, I'm eyeballing it. I know where the first one is from the change of curvature, so I'm just going to repeat the distance. Three standard deviations from the mean. And same out this way. If your curve didn't go out far enough, just extend it. So we have three standard deviations from the mean. So one, two, and three. This curve has the same thing. So here's the mean, here's one standard deviation, here's two, here's three. So I won't write them in, but it works the same even though the spread is so much smaller. So some mathematicians came along and told us the percentages, which will help you get through your problems to know. They said this one standard deviation from the mean Five minute minutes. warning. This cost and it's so also fast. 16 seconds until we need to stop the video. Oh, great. You want to stop right. it now? Yeah, we might as well stop. Okay. Now. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye.